So I have a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse, and it really wants to be a computer. But the best I have is Raspberry Pi. And not even a really good Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi 2, which is pretty old at this point and uh, is, would not make a great desktop experience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Raspberry Pi and turn it into a thin client for a virtual machine running on Proxmox. And I'm going to do it in a way that uses entirely open source software and works with any virtual machine, Windows or Linux. Before we can talk about setting up the Raspberry Pi as a thin client, we need to make sure our VMs are configured to use SPICE. SPICE is a protocol that shares display, keyboard, video, USB information across the network. And it's the protocol we're going to use in this case to connect our thin client to a Proxmox server. The first thing we have to do before we set up our thin client is we have to configure our virtual machines to use SPICE. And so on Linux virtual machines, it's very easy. You set the display adapter in Proxmox to SPICE and you add a USB device called SPICE, and that'll pass through USB devices, keyboards, mice, and one or more displays. On Linux, it'll pass through up to four displays, and the display client can choose how many displays it wants to provide to the server. And all of this works seamlessly. So if I click console here, it'll give me a file that opens in Remote Viewer. And Remote Viewer is a, an application for Windows and Linux that uh, lets you connect to the SPICE protocol. So if I show you what that looks like over here, uh, this window, the, the virtual screen on the server has resized itself to fit this window. So if I resize it, it'll take a little bit, and then the server, the Ubuntu instance running in the virtual machine, will resize itself to fit this window. And I can come up here and tell it I actually have two displays, and then I get another thing, it'll reconfigure, and now what do you know, I've got two. And maybe I actually have three displays, so let's, let's try three. Reconfigure, and suddenly we got three monitors all from the same virtual machine, and that was very easy. I had to do no setup at all. Um, the drivers are built into the Linux kernel, and it's just that easy. Now on Windows. Windows is a little bit more tricky. So on Windows, you can also set uh, Spice, and you can also pass through the USB driver, but um, Windows just doesn't work as well. So in order for Windows to get, to get keyboard and mouse, you have to initially start with something else. So usually you use standard VGA or default, and you install Windows that way, and then you load the Windows, the Windows uh, QEMU guest agent and Spice agent, and that'll load the drivers for Windows that let it resize the display and things like that. So you have to do that first, and once you do that, then the console button does work correctly. So again, I come over here, I've got my Windows install, but I can't tell it I have more than one display. So in Windows, if I'm going to close out of this, um, when you select what display type you have, instead of just selecting Spice, you have to specify dual monitor, triple monitor, quad monitor, and then it'll create one, two, three, or four virtual graphics cards for your virtual machine, and you always have to have the same number while the machine is booted up. Now, Linux, you can just select single monitor Spice, and it'll reconfigure for multiple monitors, but with a Windows guest, you have to tell it ahead of time how many monitors you're going to pass through. So the last thing we have to set up in Proxmox before we move over to the Raspberry Pi is a user. So in the Raspberry Pi, we're going to be running a, sh a script which is going to call the Proxmox API to generate a Spice config for us. And we run that in Remote Viewer. And in order to do that, we have to, have, we have to be able to authenticate to the Proxmox API. So we could just put our root password into the shell script on the Raspberry Pi and hope no one can find it. But it'd be better if we added a user. And so we're going to add a VDI user whose entire purpose is to be used to authenticate to these two virtual machines. And we're only going to give them permission to, be, to view the, the two virtual machines that the VDI user is intended to use. So I'm going to set this up as a Proxmox VE um, realm, which means that Proxmox manages the password instead of Linux. You don't really have to set any of the other parameters. So I have a user now called VDE user. You give them permissions, and they don't have any permissions. So I've, so now we need to create a role for them. So if we go to roles down here, here's all the built-in roles. And a lot of these are useful, but we want to create a role that's even more restricted. And it's for just for VDI users. And the only thing it can do is view remote consoles. So in that case, the only thing we're going to give them access to is vm.console. So they can't start and stop the VM. They can't change anything about the VM. The only thing they can do is view the console. Maybe you want to give them the ability to start and stop it. Uh, and nothing else. But we're just going to give them purely the ability to view the console and nothing else. So after we've created our role for the VDI users, we need to assign a permission. 
So we could create a group and assign them the permissions, or even a pool and assign them permissions, but we only have one user, so we're just going to add a user permission. So we're going to give them access to VM 105 and VM 106, well, one at a time. So we'll give them VM 106, we'll give VDI user, and the role we're going to give them is VDI user. So the only access they have is the console. We're going to do this for both VMs. So the VDI user has access to only the console and only on 105 and 106, which are our Windows and our Ubuntu virtual machines. And that way, even though we're hard coding the user's password or their API key into a shell script on the Raspberry Pi, the only thing that that user can do is view the console, which is what the Raspberry Pi needs to be, to be able to do its job. So I did this on the physical console because I have a physical keyboard and mouse set up. If you uh, look over here, I got this physical Raspberry Pi. So I did this in the physical console, but then I switched over to Putty. So what I did is I installed Raspberry Pi OS Lite, which is the server version. So it doesn't include a desktop, window manager, or X server, or anything like that. It just includes the Debian-based install. And then I ran Raspi config. And so there's a couple options here that we need to set. Um, so you probably want to set a host name. It defaults to Raspberry Pi. It's up to you. You probably also want to change the password, but again, that's up to you. The next thing I set was auto login, and I set it to do console auto login, which means that every time the Raspberry Pi boots up, it'll automatically log in as the Pi user to a text console. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the bash RC for the Pi user to launch the remote viewer client so that every time the Raspberry Pi boots up, it automatically jumps right into our thin client and we don't have to log in or do anything. Um, some other things you might want to set up include. SSH, so I enabled the SSH server. It's generally a good idea to do that um, so you can manage it a little bit more easily. Uh, localization, you're going to want to set the correct time zone, and if you're using wireless, you have to set the uh, wireless country. Uh, if you don't set the time zone correctly, then minor things can be off. So that's what I did in Raspi config. Um, Finally, we're going to do an apt update and apt upgrade just to make sure everything's up to date before we continue messing around from here. So now that apt has finished updating, we're going to install the absolute bare minimum of an X server so we can run graphical applications. We could have installed the full Raspbian OS with the full graphical user environment. But doing it this way, there's no possibility that the user of the thin client could accidentally end up on the Raspberry Pi OS desktop instead of the virtual machine's desktop. And the worst case, they end up in a terminal, which they probably don't know how to deal with. So we're going to install the absolute minimum here. So we're going to install X server and X11 server utils and X init and open box window manager. And it's going to need a whole bunch of stuff, and we tell it yes, and there we go. Now we wait, because the Raspberry Pi is not the fastest computer ever built. That's the whole reason we're setting up this thin client setup. Okay, so we're done installing the X server, so now we need to install the remote viewer. So the tool we use as a Spice client is called Remote Viewer, but the package is part of Vert Viewer, which is part of the Vert Manager project. So we can install Vert Viewer, and that'll install Remote Viewer for us. Okay, so now we have all the software installed, and we're ready to configure it. Now that we've installed all the software, we need to write a script that can do the Proxmox Spice authentication. So in order to use the Spice console from Proxmox, we have to first call the Proxmox Web UI, Web API, with our Proxmox authentication information to get a token, and that token lets us download a configuration file for the Spice proxy, but it's only valid for a short period of time. So Proxmox has an example script for how to, how to do this maneuver and launch remote, remote viewer, and based on that, I wrote a much simpler script, which will be the thin client, and it's available on my website and the link in the description. So I'm going to paste it into a new file, and we're going to walk through it. There we go, we pasted it in. 
So the first thing we do is we set the username and password. So we already created a user called VDI user in our Proxmox system that only has access to two VMs and only to their console. The note about the username is for the username you have to put at the realm. And in our case, we put the user on the Proxmox authentication system, which is PVE. Um, that's usually the correct realm to use unless you're using like LDAP or something like that. Next, we want the VM ID. So 106 is our Ubuntu and 105 is our Windows. So we're going to start trying with the Ubuntu one. So now we have node and proxy. And so node needs to be the name of the Proxmox server, not the IP address. If you have a DNS system, you can use the DNS name here. But otherwise, it has to be the name. And then if you have DNS and the node equals the name, proxy can equal node. Otherwise, proxy has to be the IP address of the Proxmox server. So in this case, it's going to be that. So this is the script from Proxmox that does the authentication to the API and downloads the ticket. And then it goes and it gets the configuration file for the Spice Proxy and it saves it into a file called Spice Proxy. And then we launch Remote Viewer. And we give Remote Viewer the Spice Proxy file, which has all of the information needed to connect to the Spice Proxy in Proxmox. And we also tell it dash K, which means kiosk mode. So when Remote Viewer is called, it'll open up full screen and it won't let the user use any of the configuration built into Remote Viewer. So you can't change the displays or any of that stuff we do in Windows. And then the next option is kiosk quit. So this tells Remote Viewer what it needs to do if it loses the session. So in this case, I've set it to on disconnect. So our options are we can tell it that if it loses the session, it should keep retrying, or if it loses the session, it should quit. And because Proxmox, this authentication ticket doesn't last very long, if we lose the session, there's a good chance we have to get a new ticket. So what we're going to do here is we're going to tell it to quit. And then in the script that calls this script, we're going to tell it to keep trying over and over. So if the thin client script crashes for any reason, if it loses the connection or whatever, it's going to launch this process again of getting a new ticket and connecting again. So we're going to save it and we're going to make it executable. So now if we were to run this script, we don't have a working X window manager. So it wouldn't be very happy with us. So now we need to configure the X server and the window manager that we installed earlier. So this file is launched when the X window server starts. When the X window server starts, it launches and it calls openbox, which is the window manager, and it does this, which in this case, everything is commented out, so it does nothing. So what we would like to do is when the X server launches, we would like it to call our thin client. And we would like to call it in a run loop so that if the thin client were to lose its connection and disconnect, then the thin client remote viewer will quit and it'll come back to the script and keep running. So we're going to say while true, do, and then we put it in our home directory. So now we're saying while true, so forever, call the thin client script. And so that way, when the X session starts up and Openbox starts, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to call the thin client, which is going to take over the session and run full screen. Final step in this process is to go back to the physical keyboard, physical terminal, and start the X server. So the command for that is start X space dash dash. And now what should happen is X server should run X init, which should start Openbox, which should start Remote Viewer. And we should eventually see, here it is, our Ubuntu virtual machine. And actually this virtual machine is not even installed. So this is just running off of the, uh, the live image. So we can start Firefox, we play some videos, see what happens. You go to YouTube. It's not a terrible experience. This is a Raspberry Pi 2, which is not the fastest. I don't know what the hell YouTube wants to show me. But we go to the... Uh, Classic.
So it's not playing super smooth, but it's not the worst. If we had a better client, it would probably help. So again, we're going to run startx. I've changed the script in the background to look at VM 105, which is our Windows VM. So now we should have our Windows 10 virtual machine here. And it should resize itself to fit our new screen, and it did. So that's a feature that still works on Windows. You still get to resize the display. You just can't choose how many displays you have dynamically. In this case, we only have one, so it doesn't really matter. So now we got Microsoft Edge, which is functional. <laughs> Yeah, not great. The other things we can play with, we can change some settings in Spice to see if, if they make anything faster. So one option we have is video streaming. So if we turn this on and then restart the machine, so this is just running, 106 is our Ubuntu, and it's actually just a live CD, it's not even installed. So if we stop it, video streaming all, and then restart it, we can see if that improves our performance at all. That might. Um, the Proxmox documentation says that it's application specific, whether or not video streaming will help. But basically what it does is if the screen image is changing a lot, it'll compress that part of the, of the screen image into a video instead of sending it over frame by frame like it normally does. Definitely see it's being encoded, but it's definitely smoother than it was before. You can definitely see some compression artifacts from the video process, but that's very functional. And we have to remember too, this is running on the Raspberry Pi 2, which at this point is quite a few years old and can't really handle video that well on its own to begin with. How about editing a document in LibreOffice? Is that decently responsive? Yeah, that's not bad at all. It's definitely usable. It's certainly more usable than the Raspberry Pi OS desktop. Final step now is to make this start on boot. We've been calling startx on the command line but we're almost there. We just need to get it so that the auto login will also start X. So from the from the SSH here, I'm going to edit my bash profile. What I'm going to say is every time bash launches and it's from the display, we're going to call start X. So basically what this command does is it says every time we log in as the user pi with the bash shell, the bash profile runs, and that checks to see if there is a display, which means we're running from the X session, or we have the potential to be running from the X session, and if so, call start X. And that means that when we reboot the Raspberry Pi, it's going to come up in a, in a command line, and then as soon as it logs in, it's immediately going to launch the remote viewer. So we're going to save that, and now we're going to go reboot the Raspberry Pi and see if it works. What do we get when it comes back up? We get the Raspberry Pi colors. We get our boot screen. Now it's jumping straight into starting the X server. We got a mouse. Almost there. Boom, we're in our Ubuntu virtual machine. So I've tested this with Windows 10 and I've tested this with Ubuntu desktop. Proxmox claims that Spice support has been built into the Linux kernel since 2011, so any Linux guest should just work out of the box perfectly. On Windows, you have to do a little bit of work to get the Spice driver and the QM, QEMU guest agent installed. But once you do that, this works pretty great. This is definitely a workable solution if you want to use thin clients and you're using Proxmox as your virtualization environment.